Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to record a few words to explain to the House um, how truly life-changing it is for thousands of people living in my electorate. Um, the government's announcement yesterday, implementing our election commitment to grant a pathway to permanent protection in this country for people who have been living here for over 10 years on TPV and CHEV visas. Um, this only applies to people who arrived before Operation Sovereign Borders. They are already here. They have been here for a decade, overwhelmingly working, paying taxes, part of the community. It is not, as the opposition has been mischievously trying to say, spreading fear-monger rumours, starting the boats. These people are genuine refugees. They have been living here, They're part of our community. They have spent a decade, their lives in limbo. I know a lot of words, I use a lot of words here, Mr Speaker, but I couldn't find the words to convey to this House the hopelessness and the fear that these people have had for a decade, the anxiety. For anyone born in this country, I don't think any of us could truly understand the abject terror that is caused from a temporary visa status, the threat of deportation hanging over your head, never able to put roots down, never able to build a life. It does our society no good and no credit, and it has been to our shame as a country and society for 10 years under the former government to have this permanently temporary underclass of people. It's not the Australian way. Our country has been built for 70 years on permanent migration. Permanent migration. People come, they pass the thresholds, and they can formalise their commitment to our country. We're a permanent settler society. The Liberals had no plan, none. Deport them to Afghanistan, to the Taliban. Deport them to Iran. Deport them to Myanmar to be shot and killed. No, you didn't do that. You just left them living here, lives in limbo. I've lost touch. I could never count and convey the number of conversations I've had year after year after year, with grown men crying in my foyer because they've missed their children growing up, unable to see their wives for years on end, the unimaginable pain of family separation. Some days I struggle. My staff do too. They have time off sometimes because they can't cope. But they come back because they feel the pain of the community and they want to make a difference. Now, this announcement gives hope. It's not a resolution immediately. It gives hope, because people will now be able to apply for a permanent visa—19,000 people. They're Australians in all but name—19,000. We now need to process them as quickly as humanly possible, and I hope the bulk of them will be done this year. We've also got to examine, as a government, how quickly we can progress these people to citizenship, not just because it's the right thing to do to enfranchise them and formalise their commitment to our country. But for the thousands of people from Afghanistan, their families, if they're not dodging the Taliban's bullets and trying to avoid being turned into sex slaves, they're living in fear in Pakistan. And a year or two ago, Pakistan changed their rules, Mr. Speaker. So these people in my electorate have no longer been allowed to travel there on a travel document. So until they get their citizenship and get a passport, they cannot see their children. So every time this mob over there talk to us about family values, I encourage members to remember just how cruel and heartless and un-Australian they actually are. This should scar them, and I invite any of them to come and sit down and talk with these people. They work. They're the painters, the tilers, the future anythings in our country. We also need to find the resources for what I've termed is going to be the boa constrictor swallowing the elephant of partner visa applications that rightly will come. Now, fast tracking them is the right thing to do after 10 years not seeing your own children growing up, but it will also pay a dividend by reducing the caseload because many of them are applications sitting in the humanitarian visa caseload. But the job is not done. We've got 12,000 people on bridging visas we need to now turn our minds to. They're going to have to be dealt with through ministerial intervention or lifting the Section 48 bar. Obviously, we're not going to deport them to Afghanistan, Iran and Myanmar, and the mess goes on. 
We have employed 500 new staff in the Department of Home Affairs and there is years of work right. to clean up their mess.